Claude code is powerful, and there's no doubt about it, but it falls short in one key area, model selection. By default, Claude code always routes your requests through Anthropic's most powerful model, Opus 4. It doesn't matter if you are building a full stack app or just asking what's one plus one, Claude code sends everything to Opus 4, and that's a problem. Why? Because Opus 4 is expensive, five times more costly than Sonnet 4. Claude code doesn't consider the complexity of your prompt. There's no smart switching, no built-in logic to match the right model to the task. Instead, it keeps using Opus 4 until you nearly hit your usage limit. Not because it's a better choice, but because it has no other choice. This default behavior leads to unnecessary costs and wasted tokens. But here's the good news. Claude code does let you manually choose your models. And that means you have the power to optimize every request and get more out of your usage. So in this video, I'll walk you through how Claudco handles model selection, why it matters, and how to manually choose your models. Then I'll show you how to pick the right model for the right task, so you can optimize your workflow and avoid wasting tokens. And finally, we'll tackle some common concerns people have around model switching and how to work around them effectively. Let's get started. First, let's break down how Claude Code determines which model it uses for your request. At first glance, it might seem obvious that Anthropic's recommended default setting includes some intelligent logic behind the scenes, something that analyzes your prompt and selects the right model based on how complex or how simple the task is, right? I mean, for such a powerful tool, you expect there to be some smart decision making built into Claude code. But that's not actually how it works. According to Anthropic's own documentation, Claude code defaults to always using their best available model, which is currently Opus 4. It doesn't assess the content of your prompt. It doesn't try to match model capabilities to task requirements. So whether you give Claude code a simple request like what's one plus one or a complex request like solve this multi-threaded problem, your request will always go through Opus 4, Anthropic's most powerful but most expensive model. Only when your usage approaches around 20% of your allocated quota does Claude Code automatically switch to Sonnet 4. This means Claude Code does not intelligently determine which model to use for your request. There's no backend logic that says, hey, this is a simple request, so let's use a lightweight model. Or hey, this is a complex request, so let's use the best model. The only time Claude Code switches to Sonnet 4 is when you have used up 20% of your usage limits. So the switching of models isn't strategic, but reactive. It happens only because you are running out of capacity, not because Sonnet 4 would have been a better fit for the task. And something worth noting here, that fallback threshold has been changing quite a lot. When Opus 4 was first released, Claude Code would keep using it until you hit nearly 100% of your quota. Only then would it fall back to Sonnet 4. Then, just last week, Anthropic adjusted that threshold to 50%, and now it's down to 20%. So it's clear Anthropic is actively monitoring usage patterns and adjusting this threshold, likely trying to find a balance between giving users easy access to Opus 4 and preventing them from blowing through their entire quota in just a few prompts. So this is a sharp contrast to other tools like Cursor, which do offer intelligent model switching by default. Cursor automatically selects a model based on the nature of your request, optimizing for both performance and cost. And that's the kind of behavior most users expect from a modern AI coding tool. Now, to be fair, Anthropic will likely implement a smarter model selection system in Claude Code in the future, but for now, that feature doesn't exist. So this is something you just want to be aware of. And this behavior has a real cost. Opus 4 is five times more expensive than Sonnet 4. So when every request, no matter how small or how simple, is routed through Opus 4 by default, you will end up consuming far more tokens than necessary. And as a result, you will hit your usage limits five times faster. 
Okay, now that we understand how Claude code handles model selection, let's look at a, a example that shows just how inefficient this default behavior can be. To do that, I'm going to run a basic test. I'll ask Claude code a really simple question of what's one plus one? First, using the default model setting, then I'm gonna ask Claude code this exact same query, but manually using Sonnet 4 as my model. After that, we will compare the cost. Okay, so for this example, I have created this empty code base called empty project, and there's no files or anything in here. So when I run Claude code in here, it's just going to be running on an empty code base. So we don't have to worry about Claude code using tokens to index files or whatever. Basically, we just want a clean slate. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to CD into that folder and just run Claude. So I'm just going to CD into that empty project folder we just created and run Claude. Okay, so now we are in Claude code. Now, if I navigate to slash model, I can see it's set to the default model setting, which is also the setting Anthropic recommends. So this default setting is pretty much saying that Claude code is going to use Opus 4 for up to 20% of your usage limits. Then it's going to switch to Sonnet 4. Now, if you haven't made any changes to Claude code, this is the model configuration you are using by default. Now I'm just going to exit out of this. So now we're back to the home screen. Now for peace of mind, I'm going to clear out my chat so that we are working on a brand new chat window. Okay, so now there's no more context or anything. This is a brand new chat window. And what I'm going to ask Claude Code is a really simple request of what is one plus one? And obviously the answer is two. Now I'm going to log out and look at some of our metrics. Now remember, everything you see here reflects only that one simple one plus one prompt. We cleared out all previous chats and context, so the metrics shown here only reflect that one plus one prompt. Looking at our total cost, we can see that it cost us 25 cents just to run that one simple one plus one prompt. And if you look at this line right here, you can see that Claude code uses Opus 4 for this request. And that's exactly what we expected since we're using the default model set. Okay, next I'm going to start a brand new Claude code session and run the exact same query, but this time I'll manually select Sonnet 4 from our model selection. Okay, so within the same project directory, I'm going to log back into Claude code and I'm going to start a brand new chat window. So for this run, I'm going to first go to slash model. Here, I'm going to manually select Sonnet 4 as the model to use for our run. So I'm going to go here and just hit enter on Sonnet. And now you can see that we are using Sonnet 4 for all our runs. Now I'm going to run the exact same query as last time. So I'm just going to ask it, what is 1 plus 1? And once again, the answer is 2. Now I'm going to log out and look at our metrics. Okay, so now looking at our metrics, we can see that our total cost for this run is now five cents for this one plus one prompt. And if we look at this line right here, we can see that Claude code is now using Sonnet 4 for our request. And that's exactly what we expected since we specifically told Claude code to use Sonnet 4. Okay, now let me show you a comparison between the two runs and show you how the metrics compare. Even though we asked the exact same question of what's one plus one, the cost difference between the two runs is significant. The Opus 4 run costed us 25 cents to just run what's one plus one. That's crazy expensive, 25 cents. The Opus 4 run is about five times more expensive than the Sonnet 4 run. And that's expected because Opus 4 is priced at roughly five times the cost per token. But here's the key takeaway. There's no added value in using Opus 4 for this type of task. The answer is the same and the complexity is minimal. There's no need for advanced reasoning. It doesn't make sense to use Opus 4 here. Sonnet 4 or even a older model would have handled it just fine and at a fraction of the cost. So why am I telling you this and why does that matter? Because if you stick with using Claude Code's default setting, you are letting it decide which model to use. And that means it will always default to Opus 4, even for simple tasks like this. There's no smart model switching that happens behind the scenes. Claude code will continue using Opus 4 until your usage limit is nearly depleted. Only then does it fall back to Sonnet 4. So unless you manually step in and choose the right model yourself, you will end up paying premium rates for a task that a lighter model could have easily handled. Now let's talk about how to effectively choose the right model for the task at hand. 
If you are new to working with large language models, this might sound more complicated than it really is, but trust me, it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. As I have mentioned in previous videos, here's a simple rule of thumb. If your task involves reasoning, problem solving, or anything that would make you pause and think, then it's probably a good fit for Opus 4. On the other hand, if your task is more procedural, in other words, if the model just needs to follow clear directions, then and Sonnet 4 is usually more than capable. So use powerful models like Opus 4 for things like complex algorithm design, debugging hard to trace issues, architectural planning, code optimizations, and major refactoring. And use lighter weight, faster models like Sonnet 4, 3.7, or even 3.5 for things like simple implementation work, code generation from a well-defined plan, writing documentation and comments, and fixing minor syntax and formatting errors. By being intentional with your model selection, you will get the right level of performance for your task without burning through tokens unnecessarily. And here's something just as important, which is something I have mentioned in previous videos, but it's worth repeating. These powerful models like Opus 4 are optimized to interpret complexity, find nuances, and reason deeply. So when you give them a simple task, they may end up overanalyzing the prompt, looking for depth or ambiguity that isn't there. The result? You might get solutions that are over-engineered, unnecessarily abstract, or even just flat out wrong, because the model assumes the task is more complicated than it really is. So ironically, using a more powerful model doesn't always mean better results. In some cases, a lighter model like Sonnet 4 will give you cleaner, more direct answers because it isn't trying to be clever when cleverness isn't needed. Now, let's talk about some common concerns I've seen from users when it comes to manually choosing models in Claude code. 1. It adds an extra step to my workflow. Yes, manually selecting a model does add one more step to your workflow. You have to pause, decide which model is right for that task, and remember to switch back and forth when needed. And that's a valid concern, but here's the trade-off. You're exchanging a bit of your time to save a significant amount of tokens, so it really depends on your priorities. If you're someone who frequently hits usage limits or wants to get the most out of your quota, then manual model selection is absolutely worth it. But if you rarely hit those limits, it's perfectly fine to stick with the default Claude code setting. Number 2. Sonnet 4 doesn't understand my codebase as well as Opus 4. It's true, Opus 4 handles complex reasoning and large code bases better than Sonnet 4, but that doesn't mean Sonnet 4 is unusable for complex tasks. In fact, with a few smart strategies, you can still get strong results from Sonnet 4 while saving significantly on cost. 1. Use thinking mode with Sonnet 4. Engage Sonnet 4 to use thinking mode by literally typing out think hard in your prompt. It sounds too simple, but this is actually what Anthropic recommends you do. By using the think keyword, it'll prompt Claude code to go into thinking mode and think through the problem harder, producing better results. 2. Guide the model more precisely. Like all large language models, Sonnet 4 performs better when you give it more details. Be specific in your request, and tell these models what files, what functions you want it to focus on. And for implementing new features, give examples of similar implementations you want it to follow, and structure each request around a single, well-defined, and independent part of the codebase, rather than trying to work across the entire codebase at once. And this isn't just a sonnet specific tip, it's a good habit in general. The more specific you are, the better results you will get when working with any LLM. 3. Use Opus 4 for planning and Sonnet 4 for execution. Here's a hybrid approach I have found especially effective when implementing new features, one I actually use in my own workflow. Start by opening a new chat with Opus 4. Use this more powerful model to handle the heavy reasoning, the part where you're trying to figure out what to build, how to approach it, and how all the pieces fit together. This is exactly where Opus 4 shines. Using Opus 4, focus on reasoning-heavy, planning-oriented questions like understanding how the code base 
interface works. How do the files and the functions connect and interact with each other? Designing the overall system architecture. Creating an implementation plan. Creating a test strategy and identifying the edge cases. Outlining a to-do list. Once you have got that plan in place, switch gears. For each to-do item, open a new chat window with Sonnet 4 now. Copy and paste the relevant context, your implementation plan, system design, and the specific task into that new chat. Then use Sonnet 4 to help you execute just that piece of work. When you are done with that task, clear the context, open a new chat with Sonnet 4 again, and repeat the process for the next item. And I'll be creating a more in-depth video of this workflow soon, but for now, consider this a high-level overview to get you started. So this approach gives you the best of both worlds. You use Opus 4 for its advanced reasoning and planning capabilities, and Sonnet 4 for faster, cost-effective execution. So to wrap up, while Claude Code doesn't currently support smart model selection, you can still make intentional choices to optimize your workflow and save on usage cost. I'm sure this is a feature Anthropic is actively working on and will be available in the near future. But until then, taking control of model selection yourself is the best way to get the most value out of the tool. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.